Hello there, good afternoon, welcome back to my channel. My name is Louise and this is Louise's Lifestyle. Thank you for joining me. So this afternoon I'm going to be talking about some of my tropical plants that are very sick, um, possibly dead, dying, and how I'm hoping to um, get them back to life or um, recuperate them. So the, the ones that I'm going to be talking about are custard apple, cherimoya, uh, Sika fall, Atta fall, whatever names you want to give it, Jujube, Baroi, and there is a Sapote or Mame Sapote, Papadilla, Shotada. That these are the plants that are struggling at the moment, or, or, or I'm struggling to maintain. So I'll keep them alive. I'm going to start off with the Jujube that I bought from Bangladesh. So I've got Jujube from here in the UK, Jurassic plants, which possibly is dead, um, and the one that I brought back from Bangladesh, and this is the one I brought back from Bangladesh um, in March of this year, and I have featured this in other videos. Uh, if you haven't seen my Bangladeshi videos, do have a scroll through those. Um, so this plant, when I got it, I ordered it from a nursery, so I didn't actually go to the nursery and buy it. I ordered it over the internet in Bangladesh and got it delivered uh, because it was many miles away. It was probably about 50 miles away from where I was staying. And when it arrived, unfortunately, the plant was just this st main stem here and this. There was no greenery. So all this greenery that you see um, was not on it. Uh, that's since I got it. Um, so it arrived and it was slightly taller than this. I had to break the stem because it was, uh, you know, it, it just too big to fit in my uh, baggage. And it had a couple of yellow leaves which fell off. So when I got back to the UK, all the plants that I bought back from Bangladesh were bare rooted. So no soil on them at all. Clean roots and any plants that had leaves on, I sprayed with insecticide. Even the ones that I didn't have. Uh, leaves on. I sprayed anyway just in case there were any on the stems of the plants and after a couple of months of it being here um, I had it in my living room in this room here uh, near the light and um, it started to show signs of life so a couple of months on it produced this stem here so this stem is all new growth since it came to the UK and recently it started to die off and you see that that was just brand new growth 10 days ago and what happened was it started to get this browning of the leaves and it, it wasn't due to the hot weather it was doing fine in the hot weather um, it it was something else and when I noticed um, this spotting of the leaves you can see these little tiny little yellow dots well, that's another sign that you've got pest on your plant. You see this mottling of the leaves. So when I turn the leaves over, I don't think you can see any pest on it now because I've treated the plant. But there were tiny little, they look like little grains of sand moving. And there were little webs across the top. And uh, I knew then that it was spider mites. So spider mite, what it does, it's a tiny little insect it's not like the garden spiders that spin big webs and catch flies these live under the, the bottom side of the leaves of lots of different plants not just tropical plants you know you know all your normal house plants will get it and usually when the atmosphere is quite dry so the environment that you have is not humid you will find spider mite lurking and what it does it takes all the moisture out of the leaf and the stems so they suck all the moisture and then you end up with this dead dead stems no leaves leaf drop so uh, what did i do to treat it well i use this i use bug clear it isn't um, organic it is a chemical spray 
but it does get rid of the pests so when you use a chemical spray if you're not if you've tried things like neem and washing up liquid and it hasn't worked for you then you know if you want to save your plant then you're going to have to use something like this don't spray it indoors you don't inhale it you don't want to get it on your hands wear gloves wear a mask and maybe pop a plastic bag take it outside and spray inside the plastic bag so you get your plastic bag and spray inside so that everything's enclosed uh, so all the spray is concentrated on the plant it's not blowing off into the air it's not blowing off into your face if it's a windy day so that's what that's how i do it so i've treated this three times so i sprayed it waited a couple of days checked the leaves and still signs of life after 72 hours sprayed again and checked and then sprayed again so on the third time i'm hope well i've checked just now there are no signs of anything moving so hopefully i've got the spider mites and i also sprayed here so i spray down there as well because the spider mite can drop onto the whatever compost you're using it will lurk in there you won't be able to see it. you'll think it's dust and it will climb back up your plants and reinfect it so i have to keep on top of that this has been outside it's been raining the past couple of days and uh, it seems to have helped it as well because it's got this this is new growth here and this is new growth there and also where the old leaves were on this stem it's starting to put out like new little growth buds there so i'm hoping this will recover uh kijubi is not one that i've grown before um and i will show you the other jujube plant which is a lot worse unfortunately so that's a jujube now the second one is a type of custard apple so i have got cherimoya but this plant is called um in, in bengali cherimoya is called atafol well this is sitafol um so sitafol fall means fruit um atta is the name of the fruit so atta is custard apple and this is sitafol and this is the type of custard apple that has the bumps on the surface it's not smooth with the little flat or fake scales as i call them like fish scales this has like knobbly surface so this sitafol i got from the same place that i got the uh, jujube from um it arrived with no leaves it was as as you see it now but there was nothing there's no greenery on it at all um so i didn't really get a chance to ask for a refund i was busy doing other things at the time i was getting ready to come back to the uk so i brought it back as as you see it it looks exactly like this apart from after i brought it back uh, as i say they were all bare rooted these plants so repotted uh, this is in like a citrus compost and um, it had shown signs of life um, i think i did a video on this showing that little buds were appearing if you haven't seen that video i'll see if i can find that video and maybe pop it into the screen here if not you just have to scroll through um, it did so show signs of little buds and i was really pleased but that was several months ago and it hasn't done anything since then so what i've been doing recently i mean i've had this in the greenhouse it's been a, it's been out in the hot weather um you know getting full sun um in the greenhouse with lots of humidity and nothing nothing has changed it so i brought it back inside and what i've been doing recently is literally just giving it a spray of this so spray spray and i've put it under the grow light for a couple of hours in the evening i'll just show you the setup i've got there um and recently only recently so what had happened months ago if i can just show you is it started to put out these little green buds you can see there so there were several of these along the stems and what would happen is they stay like that or they just shrivel up 
and fall off um, and nothing would happen or they would reappear and then this, they would never grow any leaves but I started to spray mist it daily now and this seems to have helped it and that there definitely showing a bit more growth um, than before so I'm going to keep an eye on this I'm hoping I get a leaf a leaf would be nice you know if it starts to produce a leaf a proper size one then that leaf can photosynthesize it can take the sun convert that into food energy to feed the roots and then you know the cycle of the plant can start properly then um so yeah it's been in this kind of semi-dormant phase for quite some time so i'm going to be doing this for the next month spray misting and then um I'll show you the uh, grow light setup in a minute. I'll keep it under the grow light for a couple of hours a day because the, the light levels are quite poor now. You know, we're in autumn. So um, that's the Sita pot, a type of custard apple. That's that's one that's struggling. Now, I have grown cherimoya in the past or atapol from seed. I had two year old plants that I did a repot. I posted the video on YouTube. And promptly after repotting them, they just died. They just died on me. Two years of looking after them and they've gone. So I did plant another one, uh, which uh, is about a year old now. Um, this is the one that I grew from seed. And I'm going to show you the one that's not doing so well. This is the one that I got from eBay. Well, my husband ordered this from eBay. So supposedly they're both cherimoya, they're both custard apple. So that seed grown has got normal sized leaves on it um, and that's okay. It's this one that's a strugg it's struggling. So I got this from eBay and the leaves were, I did do a video of this and I think the leaves weren't as small as this. I can't remember, I'll have to have a look at that video myself. But the leaves have never seemed to have got any bigger than this. They're tiny, like a little bonsai, you know, like a miniature. And I had to change the compost. I put more perlite in it because they don't like to be too wet um, and lots of drainage, you know. So when I water, it's not sitting in water. And although that looks very dry and crumbly, if I put my finger down to about an inch or so, the, the compost below is moist so it's not completely dry um, and I think it did get spider mite it was in this front living room where a lot of my plants got spider mite the citrus um, seedlings that I had um, the citrus at that level all got it so they've all gone outside but this I have not put this outside this has been in my kitchen so it's away from these plants in the kitchen and it's since it's been in the kitchen its leaves have got slightly bigger and I think that could be because it doesn't get very strong sunlight so the, the sunlight in this room is a lot stronger than the sunlight in the kitchen that gets late afternoon sun and also um, it's more humid because I'm cooking the steam etc so I think humidity is the key um, these do like they like to have more moisture around them so I'm going to start regularly spray misting this you know, I'm going to give it a spray mist now and pop that back on the window ledge now this did get I think uh, as I say spider mite so I have already sprayed it with uh, the bug clear so um, that's had a, a dose of it and, and also this plant did get I think it got thrip, not sure if it was spider mite, but I'll show you there. That's a sign of thrip damage, which is another tiny insect, sort of like a like a little tiny black line, like a little hyphen. Um, and they they do a similar thing to spider mite. They sort of strip away all the moisture. They start on the edge of the leaves. So this has been sprayed as well. I was say this has got normal sized leaves. And that hasn't so that's the one that's really struggling 
So I'll pop those to one side and I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to take the camera down to where I've got my grow light set up. So this is my little setup in the living room where my mini sick bay for my plants. I, I also use this area um, for my other tropical plants in the evening. I switch on all four of the lights. So there's four of these lights. I've only got one switched on at the moment. And I use, uh, well, I am using this uh, little tank. It's got an air stone in it and I'll, I'll lift it up in a minute so you can see. I got this, gosh, I think it was 2016 or 2017 when I was just starting out propagating plants and I wanted to, you know, have the best sort of, well, I thought would be the best way of um, propagating rooting cuttings. So I got one of these off eBay. It was, it was only about six pounds. And I have propagated quite a few plants uh, using this. However, it's the first time I'm trying to revive a dead or dormant plant uh, using this. And the reason is I've resorted to it because this um, is a sapodilla or Mame Sapo Shofada that I brought from Bangladesh. And um, when I brought it, it had little tiny fruits on it. Um, it was a lovely looking plant. But then sadly, this, I think it's a grafted plant because this looks like the area where it was grafted. You can see the join there. Well, all this has died off. So the leaves, everything, the stem from the graft, completely dry, you know, brittle, gone. But the rootstock remains quite firm. And you can see there's green growth. I've just scratched that surface and it is still green there however it's been several months since it's been like this it's been through all the hot weather it's been in the greenhouse had high humidity in the greenhouse during that hot spell warm you know the warm sun everything that you would think would help the plant hasn't done anything at all it's just remained as is it's not done anything no no signs of new life at all um and the same for this jujube this is the jurassic plants jujube and you can see it's just a little twig and it's got there's its roots um but i've not given up on this either because i thought well it has come back from the dead before you know when i thought it was dead earlier in the year it did start to suddenly produce um, new shoots but uh, I'll just pop that back in there um, it, and you know I didn't realize that they go dormant so I'm hoping that both of these have just gone dormant and uh, I'm, I'm thinking using this now this um, airstone tank I've had this since 2016 and I've used it many times to propagate various plants that might have been more difficult to propagate otherwise and I've been quite successful with it um, but I hadn't thought of using it to revive a dormant plant what I've done is I've also got this plastic uh, bottle that I've cut the bottom off and I'm placing that over the top just to keep some kind of humidity going on um, let's pop that there so that's to keep the humidity going but instead of just popping it into like just a water jug or a, a pot full of water, this, if I lift it up, you can see has this, what they call an air stone. And when you place that in the water, it produces these bubbles. I don't know if I can, you can see the bubbles there. And um, the bubbles uh, pro provide oxygen and plant roots need oxygen so um, this is what I'm hoping will revive the plant so you can see the roots of the sapodilla and the roots of the jujube are in that water they're not fully immersed but you know they're mainly immersed in the water and I'm hoping that the oxygen produced from this uh, air stone will um, revive it but who knows you know it's a bit of a gamble but i've nothing to lose really because i've tried everything else you know it's been in the my cat's come to inspect 
the um, the setup. So um, yeah, so I've tried everything. I put it in the greenhouse. Tried to give it as much humidity. It's had the heat. It's had the light, um, but nothing seems to have stimulated it into growing. Uh, I'm talking mainly about the sapodilla. So let's hope that this will make a difference and if there is any change i will be obviously filming that and updating everyone so that's it really for today so thank you very much for watching if you've got any comments on, on reviving the sapodilla any any other methods that you can think of please let me know in the comment box below thanks very much for watching bye bye